when I think about my journey through the Quran, I think about my mom. Uh, you know, she she provided for me or paved the way for me something that she herself did not have. And she would drive me to all the different Quran, you know, classes in Michigan. I grew up in Michigan. You know, her dua and her, you know, sleepless nights, hoping I make it through my teenage years um, in a non-rebellious fashion. Uh, that didn't work, and not because of her, but because of me. And um, I think it was really the the moment that I was able to go to Syria at the age of 13 and be around people that their hearts are connected to Allah and they gave the Qur'an with all their souls. And I, I felt that. And I didn't even know what tajweed was. I had never heard that word until I was 15. And they said, you're going you're gonna to learn tajweed. I said, tajweed, what? I actually didn't even know what it was. And I said, okay. So they paired me up with a teacher and um, I don't even remember how it happened, but I fell in love with it. And I felt like this is how the Qur'an is supposed to sound. This is how it was given to us in the dunya. And if you think about it, the Qur'an is the only speech on this earth that's not from here. And it's Allah's words. And what I learned about the Qur'an is that it's a journey that carries you through your life. It's something that you don't just start and leave but it's something that you start and hopefully, inshallah, we take with us to our graves. And I truly, truly believe from my heart that without the Qur'an, there's zero happiness. And that's, that's just from my own personal experience in life. And any trials or tribulations that anybody is going through, if you have the Qur'an with you, it will carry you through that. It's like being in a ship and the Qur'an is just riding you through that storm. And the dunya is a storm. It's not supposed to be a place of comfort or ease. So we're just passing through it. And if we have the Qur'an with us as that guide and companion, then inshallah, we'll never feel sadness. It's impossible. Especially if we try to internalize the Qur'an and hopefully live by it, inshallah. Um, so it's a lifelong journey and uh, I would just say three things that my teachers instilled in me and that I try to practice myself and hopefully inshallah if I can possibly give that as advice the first is to make the intention make the intention with the Quran no matter how lofty it is and start small don't, don't assume that you can't do it. The Qur'an is not for Arab, it's for everybody. The Qur'an is not for young people, it's for everybody. And I've seen countless stories where people of all ages have been able to memorize the Qur'an, live by it, and take it as their companion throughout their lives. So intention. The second thing is to always come with a clean heart. So a lot of the different talks that you've heard tonight as well as in other nights have emphasized the importance of purification of the heart. And I know that here, mashallah, in this community, there are many talks that are given about that. It's that important. If we don't refine our hearts and work on our hearts constantly, the Qur'an will have no space in our heart. We can't have both. We can't have sinning and the Qur'an together in our hearts. We have to make room for the Qur'an and for Allah. And then the third thing is du'a. Ask Allah for ease. The Qur'an is a roller coaster ride. It's not going to all be easy. There are going to be times where it's going to be challenging and you're going to want to throw in the towel, but don't. And just keep making du'a to Allah that He grants you openings and tawfiq and Inshallah, we can all take the Qur'an as our companion for our entire lives so that, inshallah, it can be our companion in our graves and it can be a light for us 
and so that we can inshallah pass that down generationally in our families and in our communities.